Hey there, thanks for clicking in. I've got another really nice vintage wanger. I'm trying to uh, feature a few more wangers and give some love to wanger. And this is a, a classic 16. I didn't know what it was called at first. It's a lot like the Forester that I just recently featured and sold, except this is a uh, three layer knife, not a four layer knife, and it lacks the saw. It has scissors, but it doesn't have a saw, and it has a Phillips driver as opposed to a corkscrew. So it's a lot like a uh, Evolution 16 or an Evo 16 with the contoured scales, but this is the classic 16. And this is a little older model from the um, early 70s or 60s. As you can see here, one of the vintage features is it does have a bail. Uh, it has the metal inlay shield. Um, we'll just kind of go through it. Uh, it also has this um, funky, quirky plunge style or dog leg style can opener. And I've featured this in the past. The way this would work is uh, you you shove it down into the can like that. And if you keep the pressure going forward, it won't close on you. It gets a little dicey if you come back on it. But you push it in against the sharpened edge. And then you hook it over the lip of the can and you, you pop up through the can lid, working your way forward. It's uh, definitely a skill that has to be acquired. And uh, this one has, of course, the screwdriver cap lifter. There's no wire stripper at this point in time. And let's see, from this side we can also catch the main blade. And it reads, see if I can get it up here, Wanger, Delamont, Switzerland, Stainless. This knife is in really nice shape. Very few scratches. Everything's uh, sharp, true, no problems. Um, I will be selling it on my Etsy shop. The only scratches you're going to find on this blade are the ones from the file, that uh, nail cleaner file that sits next to it. And uh, Let me show you that. There's no point in buffing these out because the first time you pull too hard or close the file wrong, it's just going to rub it again. Um, this is the file nail cleaner. You know, It's polished on one side. It's the nail cleaner tip. And then it's got this file. And um, it was really a poor design to put it on the inside up against the main blade. Now I have read that some variations have it on the outside, so maybe they got the message and moved it to the outside at some point. This is an 85 millimeter knife. So, you know, all those standard wingers are 85 millimeters, uh, just a little smaller than the standard 91 millimeter Victorinox. I think we can get the scissors from this side. This is another vintage feature. These are the older style scissors with the screw pivot and the single leaf metal spring, not the um, captive spring bar. And they're not, you know, micro serrated. This knife, um, they started putting that style can opener on this knife in the early 60s and I believe they stopped in around 1975. Now this would be just like a Traveler, if you're familiar with the Traveler, um, except it has a Phillips instead of a corkscrew. So there's your Phillips. And one thing that Wenger did that I really always liked, and I wish Victorinox would, is they put the nail nick for the awl on the other side, on the outside, and they put a cutout so you can get to it. So it's really always easy to get their awl out. Whereas, you know, with Victorinox, that nail nick's on the, on the, it's inboard, and you have to, like, get past the other tool to try to get a hold of it and get it out. It's, a, it's just not really convenient. That is. This bail is like a simple stainless steel loop into the body with brass bushings or brass washers. Sometimes you see those missing somehow, but those are. This is a nice example. Very nice. Let's see what else. Oh, toothpick tweezers. You know, 
Wanger went to this inboard toothpick tweezer at some point. I guess back in the 60s. Because the ones from the 50s have them outboard like Victorinox. So you've got a little toothpick and small tweezers. And so yeah, to get these, you know, you, you put your nail on the inside and pull out. So that is a classic 16 from the uh, early 70s or 60s with those vintage features. It's all sanitized, cleaned, polished, <laughs> sharpened, and soon to be oiled. Uh, for you, if you'd like to own that, just go to my Etsy shop. You know, you should take it, if you're in the market for one of these, you should take advantage of my cheap labor because. Um, I'd be embarrassed to tell you how much time I spend working on these knives, and I don't really mark them up that much. This is it's really a labor of love. And yeah, you could buy one of these on eBay. Um, it, you know, you might be lucky enough to win the auction. But I, I'll tell you what, I'm amazed <laughs> how many people on eBay that call themselves knife dealers sell knives just dirty, unsharpened, unoiled. It's like that basically what they're doing is they're buying knives by the pound from the TSA and they're just sorting them into piles and selling them off. I mean, look, look at some of the knives on there. They're just freaking filthy. I don't know how you can call yourself a knife dealer if you don't even bother to clean the knives and sharpen them and oil them. But anyway, that's my little rant. I sure do. And so that's a really nice, clean, pretty knife. Um, I'll be selling it for a little less than I sold the Forester. Um, it's in pretty good shape, just like the Forester. Maybe a little more wear to the scales, um, but it doesn't have that fourth layer. It doesn't have the saw. So uh, it'll be going for a little less. All right. Thanks for watching, and have fun collecting. <music>